What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at South by Southwest 2024. I am lucky enough to be sitting with the team behind doing it. This is the only interview I'm conducting without having seen the movie, and I am like exploding with enthusiasm for this right now. I cannot wait to see your film. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. We hope you love it. I have very, very high hopes. Not to put the pressure on, <laughs> no, no, but no, I have very good. high it's hopes. So clearly I know what doing it is. A lot of our viewers are first gonna learn about your film through the festival. So who would like to do the synopsis honors? Please. No, you, please. <laughs> Um, it's about a 30-year-old Indian-American virgin who gets a job teaching high school sex ed. Um, so it's it's a it's sort of like a raunchy sex comedy meets the substitute teacher movie. Well sold right there. I love highlighting in this industry when two people find each other and decide like this is my person. I want to have a long-lasting creative partnership. When did you first meet and what's the first thing you noticed in the other that made you think this is a good collaborator for me? Culture. Culture, Indian. 100%. Persian. 100%. Persian, Indian, s different but similar yeah. upbringings, I would yes. say. There was a lot of things in the in the script that I thought, you know, I really love some material. I really think it's important for a woman to be leading this, but also a diverse woman I thought was really important as well because there is such a cultural lens in the film and I wanted someone unapologetic who was going to be like, yes, let's go in. This is taboo in a lot of cultures. We're going to talk about this stuff. We're going to open up this conversation uh, fearlessly. And that's what I fell in love with. I love that. <laughs> Same. I mean, I feel like, I mean, also women in comedy, mm -hmm. female comedians, finding leads that are both funny but also diverse is really important to me because um, I think t telling female forward stories from a diverse perspective is what I try to do as a filmmaker. So you clearly knew how special the other yes. was. Can you each recall a time on set when you looked at the other and thought like, I knew you were good, but I didn't realize you were capable of that. <laughs> wow. I know mine. I know mine. Go. Um, well, she was, Lily was so dialed in as an actor, which is, it, me, it means so much to me as a director to like have an actor just come in super dialed in. Cause also we were moving really, really fast. This was like a mile a minute kind of pace that we had to move at. Um, and so that was so impressive. And she, Lily had a two page monologue. And she, when she, and I was really nervous about it because I was like, oh my gosh, she's going to get the lines. Is it going to be great? How many times are we going to have to do this? Nailed it. First take. Nailed it. She knew all of her lines. And then after that, I messed up every single take. But <laughs> what matters is the first take. But, but that was really because the entire Video Village, my script soup, the producers, we were and in my DP too. I think I was at Video Village with my DP because my DP was like, is she going to get all these lines? How many times are we going to do this? And he, he was like, did she just do every single line perfectly? And so, yeah, it was the monologue where I was like, pro, I was so impressed. Well, and you know what I love? I love that one eighth of that monologue is in the film. Um. <laughs> that all got cut, but I appreciated that she did all of the it. The most important parts are in it, but yeah. if there's ever an extended cut, know that there's many more where that came from. I say this all the time about deleted scenes. It's not gone because even though it got cut from the final film, you could still feel those deleted scenes influencing the performance that is seen on screen. Totally. So it's still That's valuable. That's a good way to put it. I always think For about me, that. For me, I think there was a day, um, without giving too much away there was a day that was very a higher pressure than other days we were moving really really fast it was a it was a very ambitious day and a lot of peop other people would have been super stressed in that situation it was the dance um, and you know we were behind and things were kind of not going to plan and Sara was just so calm and collected <laughs> At least from what I saw. I don't know what happened behind closed doors, but I'm just saying she was so calm and collected and I just really appreciated that because as an actor, you know, you want to, you really pick up on energy and I'm like, if you're stressed, I'm just like naturally empathetic woman. I'm going to be stressed vicariously for you. And so she was just so calm and collected that day and I knew I was like, oh man, I really appreciate mm. that she has like such a good head on her shoulders. Setting yeah. the right tone like yeah, that is of totally. the utmost importance. Top down yeah. is true and you keep everyone calm and you make a good atmosphere totally. on set. I love it. Yeah. Um, I kind of jumped ahead there. I want to go back to uh, the development of the script because I always love hearing about how things change over the course of the writing process. What would you say is the biggest difference between draft one of the screenplay and finished film? Ooh. It got super raunchy. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I don't yeah, think yeah. we started right off answer. that raunchy, but um, yes. I think it, it 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 took a raunchy turn. Um, but I think this the characters. I mean, the characters are just so grounded and relatable. I think I think this is a very accessible movie. 
but and then but then there's these like heightened outrageous moments of comedy and I do think that kind of came in later totally I also think there's a very beautiful friendship in the film that wasn't necessarily their draft one mm -hmm. um, that I think a lot of friends especially you know girlfriends are gonna watch and be like oh my god that's so us and we love that yeah. but I do agree with your answer of what actually happened was we had a draft and then we like kind of did a table read for a few friends and all of the friends we thought were gonna be like oh my god we're like make it dirtier <laughs> and that's when I realized that my friends are a bunch of freaks yeah. and so it ended there was there it just let's just say we feel it goes there <laughs> I feel like friends like that keep you on yeah. your toes and keep I wasn't life anticipating more exciting, that eh? honestly yeah I wasn't anticipating we took them. a couple swings yeah oh. <laughs> is there I don't want to spoil anything of course but is there any particular big swing you took in that respect that made you think like someone's gonna stop us they're not gonna let us do it but it's in the finished film uh, yeah Yes, absolutely. Without uh, the the big no spoiler, yeah. Oh, yeah. the beginning. The beginning. Just say the beginning. Let's just say we start with a with a bang. Oh, <laughs> love me, love me a movie that comes right yeah, out the it, gate like it that. Will, it will come right out the gate. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. <laughs> also, I love I love puns. I love everything <laughs> like that. Um, another another writing question. Can you pinpoint like the core concept, the singular idea that started it all? But then also, did you have a break story moment along the way? Something that came that you came up with that made you think to yourself like like this is full now. Hmm. I mean, it, I think we both, which I think a lot of people will relate to this because there's so much to mind because we all had high school sex ed. And so. Or we didn't. Or, yeah, have like high we all had like, ed. you yeah. know, we everybody has that, like my gym teacher taught us sex ed. We did the condom I and banana. I watched public and sex ed. Yeah, yeah, totally. I just I watched a video about childbirth, which made it in the movie. Um, <laughs> it was just childbirth video, um, pamphlets on venereal diseases, just a lot of fear tactics. Um, and not a lot of information. So I think that definitely was what made us like, uh, you know, hang on to the film because we all had this experience. Um, and then I think to your to speak to your other question, um, I think there's a really beautiful mother daughter storyline which get, which kind of gave the movie a heart. Um, I think sex comedies like this that are sincere and trying to start like a sincere conversations are very, very few and far between. So I think that when we found the heart of the movie, I think was also, I think, a big turning point in the development. Reading up on this movie, it like brought me back to high school and just like really how absurd that that class was, how, how absurd and, and utterly useless. Totally. And what I love about this film is that it shows you that absurdity, but it kind of shows you the consequences of that absurdity, right? Because we're dealing with an older character. You know, Maya's what, whatever, older. She's not a teenager, she's not yeah. in high school. So you're seeing that like, oh, this actually has an impact on people's lives. And so it's kind of of this character unlearning a lot of things and learning things that otherwise, and I think a lot of, I mean, at least in my experience, a lot of girls and women I think can relate to that. Probably anyone in general, but especially girls and women, I feel like there's a lot of shedding of shame and unlearning of things we've been taught. And I think that's really powerful. I truly can't think of a single movie that addresses that at that age yeah. and like from that standpoint too. So I'm looking forward to seeing how you unpack it. I'm very adamant on that. I mean, I, I do think during the writing press, uh, process, there was a little pressure to be like, define her age in the 20s, where I was like, no, I want her to be mm -hmm. older. Like, I think that's important because I know a lot of friends in their 30s, 40s, beyond, they're like, I'm still learning things about my body, especially because I've never been taught. And I think that's really important. I feel like that's true at any age. Like, it doesn't matter what 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 age you are. And I also think about that a lot with, um, with coming of age stories. I feel like everybody boxes it into being a teenager. You come of age at every single point in yeah. your life. I don't know totally. if this is just something old people say now, or people in their 30s, but I do feel like you learn so much about yourself in your 30s. You do. Like you really do. Now I'm like, I didn't know anything about myself in my 20s. I thought I knew about myself in my 20s, but I do think that's important. We don't see that. We don't give women uh, the privilege of aging, especially on screen. Mm -hmm. This is like stick at a certain age and that's it. But like, no, it's a journey of learning. And I, I hope the film captures that. Oh, I could have hours and hours worth of conversation <laughs> about that. I have a personal question for both of you, inspired by the movie, specifically a quote that you said in your director's statement. You mentioned that the movie is partly about the unlikely people who come into our lives when we least expect it and push us past the limits we've set for ourselves. Can you each name someone who came into your career in that way, where what they did helped you exceed your own expectations for your work? Lily Singh. I was gonna I'll say you, <laughs> but I 
I guess that's too cliche. Yeah. Is that cliche? No, it's I mean, beautiful. I mean, this movie definitely pushed us past yeah. our limits. Um, I think our producers pushed Everyone, us. I, I, mean, yeah. not, I know we're here to talk about the film, and now it's just like another promo answer. But to be honest, like this film did really. We were coming of age. Yes, this, this film for us both. Like, we both talk all the time about how before this film, we, we struggled to say the word sex. And we both had that kind of experience. This film pushed me out of my comfort zone in so many yeah. ways. The people involved, the producers, the other cast members. Like, I'm really privileged and grateful in the fact that I worked with a lot of really seasoned, experienced actors that are so talented on this, and yeah. I was kind of the newbie, and I learned so much from them, and so this entire project, I feel like I'm a different person. It was a lot of growth on this project. Yeah, it's, so I guess doing it? Doing it. Doing it? I'll doing it, that. the film doing it, yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> you, you brought up the supporting cast here. Can, I'm sure there's gonna be many answers to this question, so I apologize in advance. Can you name a time on set when a co-star was like just the scene partner you needed, where what they did helped you crush a tough scene or find something in your own character that you wouldn't have been able to reach without them? <laughs> You're right, there is a lot of answers to this. Um, Sabrina Jalise is in the film. Um, I'd say a lot of the scenes I have with her, we became the such good friends on this set. Like we text all the time and I, I adore her. They were magic together. But I do feel like there was a lot of scenes we had together. I was like, oh, like I'm finding something in the female friendship experience through us doing this scene together that is like was not on the page perhaps necessarily, but we like found through this experience. Um, a great scene partner and I th mm -hmm. I'd like to think our chemistry is pretty great oh my god I mean like it's rare where you're like making a movie and you're like I should make a movie with just them road trip <laughs> comedy I mean like when you they were in scenes together I was like thinking about new stories like they were such good uh, scene partners and they are so funny together it warrants like their own show um, so yeah I, I was wondering who you were going to say but I thought it was going to be Sabrina yeah, yeah. I mean they there's, were, and there's, 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 so there's so many, many other there's people. so many yeah. but yeah this the roster on this film yeah is just mind-blowing to me. Um, I want to make sure to highlight your character a little specifically right now and to avoid me being like, tell me a little bit about her. This is a question I love asking to kind of like tease who someone is. Sure. At the beginning of the film, what do you think Maya thinks her greatest strength as a person is? But then I also want to know what you think she fears her greatest weakness is. She, Maya <laughs> thinks her greatest strength is, in the beginning of the film, is that she's just like, has it figured out? Mm -hmm. She's like, I know what's up. I, I'm a little bit of a rebel. I have everything figured out. Um, no one can tell me what to do. I'm my own boss kind of situation. Okay. Um, at the end of the film, I think her greatest strength is uh, maturity and unlearning uh, a lot of what she thought it meant to be in control of a boss. I think she had this facade earlier of like being in control and being her own person. I think at the end of the film, she's actually her own person. And she understands that means she can unlearn certain things or learn certain things and make her own decisions across the board. But it's, it's a maturity, it's, a, it's growth, um, and it's just like fully stepping into womanhood. I would I say, do you agree with that? Totally, I think she's, yeah, I think, it's funny how your greatest strength is also often your greatest weakness. Totally, totally. Um, so I think she had a lot of, wow. she has a lot of blind spots mm -hmm. and then she confronts those blind spots and yeah. comes out, you know, a more, more actualized version of herself. Totally. As you verbalize that, I'm like, my greatest strength. Oh, yeah. I know, it's literally when you said yeah, it. Yes, oh. I could see, I could see what's happening <laughs> there. Um, I love asking about how things can evolve on set and especially in the process of overcoming challenges. So can you tell us about a day on set when things weren't going to plan, you found a creative way to pivot, but now something in the scene is better off for it. I mean, pace was, you know, budget. Like, indies are just tough because there's not, you know, there's limited budgets, which me, which determines a really fast pace. So we wanted to make a big movie on a small scale, uh, which meant we had to like, I think we were averaging like uh, seven, seven to eight pages a day. So it was like a TV pace that we had to move at. Um, there was one day, It's there's this sequence in the movie called The Black Void, where older Maya goes into this, delves into this like black void and confronts her younger self and has a conversation with her younger self. Um, and so I had like really big ideas about how I wanted to do this technically, but you know, time, money. Mm -hmm. And so we came up with a, um, a kind of crafty way with my DP where we set up like, it's called a par tree. Uh, with like three lights that kept going up and down and then we at did it with like atmospheric smoke so we had like a crafty technical solve that we kind of came up with like last minute but i think it, it kind of worked so i would say it's that sequence Ooh. where it was sort of a we were like using rigs and on these lights and it really helped 
It's, it's kind of a boring technical. No, 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 no. I like it. I was a great, a great tease of what sounds like a really important scene. I, I was going to say, you know, going back to indies and money, um, mm. a music budget is really tough. Uh, yeah. Music is, is super hard. And Nobody thinks about that, it, too. Uh, so this was a learning experience for me because I was like, the song is how much? The yeah, music is how, like, it was too. such a learning experience for me. Yeah. Um, so our credit song, it was an original I wrote in two days. Yes. Because we didn't have money for yes. music. <laughs> she had to, she was tasked with writing a, and they were like, and make and also make it a hit. <laughs> she wrote an original song for the movie in two days. When I heard the first version of it, I was like, wow. I was so wowed. I I mean, it's so funny, but I was also like, You're a rapper? I had no idea. Like it was a she, lot of fun. I, it I was, really like doing music stuff. Yeah. And you'll see it's in, the perfect you'll see in for some the movie. parts, small little scenes in the movie, you'll see some music writing a little bit in, in scenes. But I was happy I got to do that. But it was literally because we're like, we don't have budget for a song and so we need something cool here. And I was like, I will just do this. But I think it turned out great. Oh my God. It's so good. because it, it's telling the story of the movie, but also the making of the movie. Right, so it it's really meta. Yeah, it's kind of brilliant. I mean, it's not kind of brilliant. It is really. Stop. Brilliant. We'll keep going. I'm so <laughs> excited. To be here. A big part of the reason why I like exist in this industry is specifically because of Scream. And there's like no, there's no more meta movie out there than Scream. So anytime something taps into that, I'm like, yes, this sounds like it's going to be exactly for me. Totally. I feel like like maybe the song is the answer to this. But I've gotten in the habit of asking this a lot lately. I love how in this industry. People give each other awards. That's really cool. Nobody says good good job to themselves enough, though. What is something you accomplished while making doing it that you know you'll be able to look back on and say, I'm so proud of what I did there? That is such a good question. Oh, my God. I love that question. Um, I would say, like, I'm, I, I'm proud of what I made with what I had. Like, way to, like, way to make something with what you got. You know, because I think you have to be so crafty on indies. And I think... Um, that's something we really achieved was I think we did make a big movie on a small scale because we were all resourceful and crafty. Yeah, I'm going to say for me, I kind of touched on this, but the subject matter was something that I super had to step out of my comfort zone for. And there's a few scenes in there where I was kind of dreading shooting. But I think when I arrived, I really had this mentality that was like, I'm just going to commit. And there were some scenes where like, honestly, respectfully, even Sarah was like, we got it. And I was like, no, you know what? I, I felt myself holding my we're going to do it again. <laughs> so I really do believe that I committed to stepping out of my comfort zone in such a way where like when I watched on screen now, I'm like, I can't believe I did that. That's a big yeah. deal. Yeah, That's totally, a big deal. You totally. should be you proud of that. You confronted your fear. <laughs> I know. You totally. confronted the subject matter. I know. I'll, I'll follow that up with this question then. Uh, going out of having made doing it, is there any new tool, I'll say, in your acting toolkit, in your directing toolkit, that you can credit to this experience that you're eager to apply to another film? Hmm. Well, I will also say I learned a lot about being a producer as well. That it's my first time producing a film as well. And also I think a big deal. When I reflect back on this experience, there were times where I feel like, and this is honestly a testament to being a woman, something I've really learned on this project was like, I do have the tendency, the term is called hedging, I've learned, of like, when I say something, I say it in way too many words in a whole bunch of like, I. I think it should maybe be like this because maybe something I do a lot of that and I'm like, oh, you know what's way more efficient to be like, this should be like this. Mm -hmm. I want this like this. So as a producer, I really learned just to like, and I hate wording it this way, but I, this is the most easy way to understand. I was like, speaking how a man would speak, honestly. Like there's a lot of men on set where I was like, oh, the way you just said that is very clear. And for some reason, my brain is telling me I can't say it like that. But through this experience, I don't know if you've noticed, but like towards the end of the movie, I was very much so like, this needs to happen. This is the way this should happen. And I was not like that at the beginning of the film. So I'm going to take that to all of my future projects because I, I don't think being straightforward is being rude. I think you can mean what you say without being mean. Mm -hmm. Speak with authority and exactly. like you have belief in what totally. you're saying and the value totally. of it. There was just no time for pleasantries towards it. I was like, yeah, yeah. There was no time. <laughs> there's just no time. <laughs> I have to learn this lesson. Just because I'm curious, how many days did you have to shoot this? I think it was 20. We're still shooting. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's 20 days. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's ambitious. That's, uh, was, fast. was it 20 days? Yeah, four weeks. Okay. 20 or 22 days. So something of that nature. Yeah. Yes. It blows my mind. Um, I think from a filmmaking perspective, I 
I think I took some, I, you know, moving forward, I think there were sequences in this movie that did get a little experimental. And I was like, coming from a very like traditional shot language, conventional filmmaking. And I think, you know, I think also the producers kind of pushed us to go a little experimental and that really paid off. And I think that's something I'll take with me is to get a little crazy with the yeah. camera and like go for it and, and experiment a little. And if it doesn't work, you can cut it out. But I think there's there's some experimentation we did in certain sequences that I'm really glad we did it because um, it, it did actually make it in. So. Um, yeah, just to experiment more. I love hearing that. If you don't, uh, you know, swing big, take some risks. Yeah. What's the totally. point? What's the totally. point? I'm going to end with my supercut question of South by Southwest 2024 because I feel like there's a lot of, I guess, like doom and gloom in the industry right now, a lot of negativity. So I want you each to pinpoint the most recent film you saw that gives you hope for the future of Hollywood. Ooh, can I shout out another South by Southwest? I film? will happily take that. I'm gonna shout out my girl Alana Glazer because yesterday I watched good. Babes. I watched Babes yesterday, and I love see. First of all, I love seeing stories about women, mm -hmm. but this was a portrayal of a female friendship where I was like, "This is so real. It is so hilarious. I see myself and my friends in this." And I think just something we have in common is I love female comedians, and I just thought I loved that film. It's gonna be a huge hit, and I'm so proud of her and everyone involved. Second, everything you just said. Um. I, I, yeah, I mean, it's funny. I don't have a comedy actually, but like the last movie that I saw that really surprised me was Past Lives. Cause I was like, oh, it's so simple. It's so minimal, but I was so unbelievably moved by it. And it reminded me that you can make something really great with something very simple. It wasn't too big, you know, and you can tell a good story with very little. Um, and yeah, that was the last thing I saw. That I was like very surprised mm -hmm. by. So simple yet complex, and yes. the combination of those two things, I think, makes it like a more authentic or like true to life version of what a relationship and the evolution of one is. Yeah, I love totally. it. Beautiful it film. Mm -hmm. I am so excited to see yours. These are great Thank teases. You. Now Thank I'm you. now I'm like itching even more you to really get my love ass this, in theater. Don't you? I, love it I so can much. see it all. I just love talking to you because yeah. I can just see you. You like love films <laughs> and do. i love talking I to you because of that because you're like not just asking these questions because they're in front of you you're like i need to know the answers to those things there's like a cartoon version of me right now where there's like i don't know like lightning bolts or fire like I coming out that. of my head during these i love how passionate you are about this thank, thank you. you for bringing Appreciate that passion in that. yeah no totally i will say congratulations on doing it i am counting down the seconds until i get to see it thank, thank you, you so much appreciate it